All right, so we are floating this pan with deck mud. We're getting it ready, but we're also putting Dietra heat in here. So I got the flow effects flange already installed. I got it at the height that I want it. It's about an inch. The top of it's about an inch off of the slab here. And we're gonna create the slope that we need. If you're using Dietra heat, you need to keep one thing in mind is that you cannot just screed off of the top of the bonding flange like you typically do without Dietra heat you have to recess the mud a little bit below so that when you put your Dietra heat in, it matches up flush to the top of the flange. Because if you were to just screed your mud off of the top, what would end up happening is your Dietra heat would be over and there's no way to create a good waterproof seal uh, with your sheet membrane that goes over the top of the Dietra heat. So I run into this a lot. A lot of people reach out to me through my tile coaching and oftentimes it's too late. They go, well, how do I make this work? I'm like, man, you're, you're kind of kind of screwed. You're pretty much not going to be able to use Dietra heat in your shower unless you rip out the, the flange and find a way to raise it up. But that's pretty difficult to do. So I'm trying to save you guys some grief here and show you how to do it. Uh, so what I, what I like to do is I've taken these sticks and these are just redwood lattice strips. We use these for floating walls. You know, when we, we trip up our walls, we use the float strips, but these are just redwood strips about a quarter inch thick and I've, I've cut them up. But what I've done is I've notched, you can see I've, I've made a notch in here. And so the notch is the height of, of the Dietra heat. So you wanna make your notch the same thickness of the Dietra heat. So when I go to screed, here's my short one, and I got a few different lengths and you'll see why I have a few different lengths. But so when I screed, the notch is gonna rest right on the flow effects. And so my mud is gonna be recessed a little bit from the top, just the thickness of that notch. So it's pretty simple to do. And I've made different length sticks because I'm gonna be you know, using some here where I need shorter. And as I get out here, I'm gonna need, need longer sticks. So we got our deck mud mixed up. I'm gonna put a little slurry down. I'm gonna put a thin set underneath the flow effects flange here so that the deck mud bonds to the, to the bottom of it. One of the nice features of the flow effects drains is they have the, the mortar lock channels under it. So when you put thin set under it, it really locks it into the bottom of the bonding flange. So you have, you have less, less chance of the, the bonding flange breaking bond. If you notice a lot with the Schluter ones that are completely smooth plastic on the bottom, when you do a dry pack or a deck mud float, a lot of times you step on it or something and it, and it breaks bond and then it's kind of loose and you definitely don't want these things loose. You want them locked into the mortar. So we're gonna put some thin set underneath them, then put the deck mud in. We use it, uh, since we're on a slab, we're gonna use a thin set, what we call slurry, which is basically a bond coat so that the deck mud bonds to the slab. And uh, I'm just gonna set up my screeds and get going.
How about... Yeah, you have more time with it. And... Seems like I could get a smoother top surface too. Yeah. Yeah, Dynacrete, since it's not as rich, it does allow um, allow you to use it a little wetter without it turning into you know brick mortar hmm. that slumps and. So yeah, you want to make sure that you really get uh, the deck mud packed under this drain as much as you can. That's usually one of the first things I do after I kind of spread it out. See, I spread my slurry. I didn't spread it under my knees so that I'm not going to get thin set all over my knee pads. So Yeah, I got that packed. Now I'm going to start working on my perimeter here. So I drew, I drew a little line here as a gauge. It's kind of hard to see, but I, I made just a little pen line that gives me my quarter inch per foot. So I'm gonna do quarter inch put per foot to here for the drain, and I'm actually gonna ramp it up a little bit. I usually do a level perimeter, but since we're using a, we're using a mosaic that's long strips, I didn't want the slope to be really drastic around uh, the drain, especially in the back, because I don't want to have to make relief cuts in it, so we'll see how it goes. It's a little different. Typically, I level the perimeter and then just screed everything in. setting your, your perimeter screeds you just want to make sure that you don't pack you want that mud sitting up about a quarter inch to a half inch at the most unpacked as you're setting these screeds so you can easily tamp down the edges and, and form that screed line See, it leaves that really nice screed line that we're going to work off of. right behind you. Thank you. Thank you. 
see right there I got the bubble right in the middle for my screed, nice and level. Get that little, uh, your little, little guy, little trough. Yeah. <laughs> Things a champ. Oh, yeah. All right. I know. I brought it in thinking you might use it. Out in that Martinez area, the homes are like you know really tiny, so a lot of the pans are super small. Oh yeah? So this is, came in handy out there too. That's what that e-tile dude swears on too. I think that's all he uses. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool little trowel. an inch off of the up off of that end right there for me. So you can see I've used my sticks with a notch to, to get a good screed with everything. That notch is just riding right on there. I just keep cutting my strips shorter as I need them. I just cut them so I got a little guy now that so I can get in the back here. And then I'll have to use uh, little trowel to just kind of shape everything but so yeah so then 
the notch, once, once you get the notch, you can check it. So I'm just gonna double check. I got my Dietra heat, lay it down, and make sure everything is flush right here, and I'm good to go. So I'm just gonna continue to shake this pan and work my way out of here. Some of that residue on there. Yep. See if you can just take a knife. Oh. Get this off. With, uh, you got a razor knife? Yeah, let me see that. Let me see if it comes off of that.
Let's see. Yeah, so what's neat about this pan is it's, it's gradual, it's not so drastic. It's, it's all going down on one plane, like two feet. And then once it gets around the drain, then it's sloping down into the bowl. So 
Uh, it's really nice to be able to do this with deck mud to be able to shape and make this pan exactly how I wanted. I probably could have had Cornel. Cornel could have made this out of foam, but I was really trying to figure out, <laughs> it would probably take me longer to try to draw it all out for him than it would be to float. I know not all of you guys have the, the floating skills like this. I've been doing it for so long, it's like second nature to me, but uh, it's really nice to be able to get your pan exactly where you are, take into your calculations and really create this work of art. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish this up, put a steel, put a flat trowel to it and then we'll do the Dietra heat, then we'll do the tile. So thanks for hanging with me today. I love you. I love being your tile coach and I'll see you on the next video.